And here is my chosen parallels that um, I want to test them also. So I verify that they are uh, really okay, equal, and um, uh, for for the purpose of using here. Yes. Yes, so I'll uh, use them this way and then I'll put the column on top. And uh, another reason for using these parallels, apart from that they are flat and parallel, um, is that these are long so they will distribute the weight over a long surface and uh, and so I need not worry about that um, being a problem. And the method I have been taught, or I think also, was to place two even shims. So I'll do that here. And then but here I can see also then that Actually, this is uh, it's bigger here, which means that it is, at least now, tilting. It's a little bit uh, like tilting forwards. So this is really, well, at least strange to me. Now I have a 10 hundredths shim. This also passes, at least down here. Uh, so 10 minus 4 is 6, so um, 600 tilts tilt forward, if we say this is uh, so, on that uh, direct, on that uh, length, I mean, it's, let's, well, let's find out how much. As always, I think it's healthy to be skeptical to your measurement instrumentation, so in this case, my squares, so I'll test them against one another each other uh, to see. So I do the same method, so force, force in there and then see if I can fit this or that this also then the same amount of drag. And indeed it has. has. So um, This is okay at least, and I did the same with the smaller one. Uh, <coughs> freestanding, the column is tilting backwards, and I have now done quite elaborate uh, investigations into this, and I found out that it is high in the middle. Uh, so uh, when measuring at the rear side, we can see that there was a gap here at the actually on this side but what happens is that it actually tilts onto that side so it has a pronounced um, flat area here also to 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 sit on and now as you can see four hundreds of a shim here ten hundreds i'm talking hundreds of millimeters here so this is uh, actually much more so maybe on this distance from here to here, uh, roughly, I would say, 15, 16 hundredths of a millimeter, which is considerable. And the reason for this is that, as I said, freestanding, the column has, I can barely fit the five, 500 shim, 400 goes well under. A little bit more on this side than on this side, but still. And then it's, it's uh, if I take a three or a two, it's tempting to go under. So it's a bit, there's a bit of a rock here. It's high in the middle. We will see that also when we blew it up. 
It can, however, be so that if you blew it up and then rock it, that it will blow up all over. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. The main thing is the fact that this um, lower portion, uh, or the, the, the front portion, is flat and then starts to drop here. So that's why I measured this being zero, uh, this being six hundredths of a millimeter low, meeting about here. It's not entirely gradual, it's more like flat and then steep down. But anyway, this of course makes for the fact that uh, you have a sort of a pivot point, so it, 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 it's not, no wonder that this is not stable, really. And, um, Less surface area, of course, that uh, you can rest this on, the less stable it is, and the more error prone your uh, your setup or your performance will be. And uh, of course, uh, if you tighten down here and or here, and you can try to tighten down to even up, but I, it's flawed, uh, so you have to correct that. So, um, at first measured thinking that this meant that it would tilt forward because of the fact that I saw that this was like opening here but in fact when you st st stand it on um, on the on the foot here it rests backwards a little bit meaning that it actually rests on this smaller portion here that must be because of the weight distribution, I assume. In any case, it's uh, when you rest it uh, naturally on the on the surface bed, it rests with a backwards tilt, which of course is totally in unacceptable. And this is the print I got. So we can see here that it touches well in this corner here and also oops do like this touches well over here and also quite a bit over here uh, not much there there's a speck down here which I think is a false marking one speck there and uh, some touches a little bit here but all in all <laughs> you can think <laughs> this is the distribu this is the uh, this is the um, let's say the the contact points between the saddle no the um, sorry the um, the base and the column and there's no wonder to me that it will not be really a, a good Neither a good contact uh, stability nor a uh, precise mounting. So we'll improve this by much, I'm pretty certain. So we'll correct the field uh, down to where we have the bare minimum of tilt uh, according to spec. And then of course uh, adjust well, and, and, and distribute the, um, the bearing points better. So when these bolts are tightened down, it won't distort the column. So I'll try to explain what I think is happening here. Uh, referring to the measurement where I put the front waist down to the plate and measure here. I measured with a, with a square, of course, here. With, this is 90 degree and then the uh, side here uh, pronounced a, uh, a gap if uh, I had a 400 shim there I could easily fit a 10 hundred shim there so the gap here was about six hundredths of a millimeter and uh, that was down to uh, well almost like here well the rest would then contact and would be um, at night at, at um, 
the same uh, 90 degrees to the front, uh, the same uh, plane as it should be. Um, but there, I assumed, uh, namely, that uh, maybe it was a little bit more like to the middle. You can call this high in the middle uh, in very simple terms. So uh, anyway, I assume that uh, because of this gap that uh, the tilt was forward, that it should lean forward. But when we measured here, I could see the opposite. And then uh, investigated a little bit further um, and it was quite pronounced, I mean like uh, uh, I would say 15 to 20 hundreds of a millimeter at the uh, distance here of uh, 30 or 300 or 3 to 400 millimeters. So quite pronounced uh, backwards tilt. And this is of course because, I, at least I think, the, the mass uh, is predominantly on this side, at least I could um, feel that. So it would lean onto that area here. So it would lean onto the area with the, where, where it was out of true, so to speak. And I could also measure here, so I could have a, I had a gap here of about uh, five hundreds. So it, it, it was correct down here and uh, it uh, leaned because of the mass here of the column standing, freestanding back on this faulty area here. And we saw that when uh, I glued it up, glued it up and it was only touching at the, at the rear. It only blew it up here. So um, I think this is evident Evidently so. So then just scrape and uh, fix this so that it is uh, square or true. Uh, then anyway, make these uh, true these up so you have a firm uh, uh, foundation. It's not in any way surprising to me that such a budget machine skips uh, several steps uh, after machining that they don't. Uh, prove it to be uh, true or uh, scrape it or fix it. I mean, this costs time and time is money. So, uh, I mean, if you would like the machine to be that accurate or better, maybe some of them are, but then, okay, pay, pay double or triple. So obviously what we have to do if we enlarge that section here, this being the little bit bold or straight and high here, gap up there, which is here. Uh, then we, and we prove that this part is 90 degrees to the waist. We need to scrape this down, even though it's touching there, so that we get a new reference surface here. So we need to scrape down here first to the to even out the area here. So if it was six hundredths of a millimeter, we need to take out six hundredths of a millimeter here so that we will take that down and also of course here, but at least move that that further down.